So coming into Jing Jai Market, and this is very popular with tourists, but um, I think I see more Thais here than I do tourists. But let's take a walk through it and show you guys what's here. As yeah, apparently it's a very popular place, and we did struggle to get parking here, and because um, it was just it's just so busy here, and um, so we ended up parking down a side street. We we're just lucky that one car was pulling out as we we're coming in. Jingjai Central Creative District is one of the community caring project by Central Group, located at At Sadatorn Road only five minutes away from Tape Gate and 10 minutes away from Chiang Mai International Airport. Now, Jingjai Central consists of three zones, namely Jingjai Village, Jingjai Market and Jingjai Gallery. Each zone is unique and serves its own purposes. So Jingjai Village is designed as a community space, fusing Lana architecture, lush greenery. It is home to unique eateries, cafes, as well as office space and open space where Thai and international artists can express themselves through art. Jingjai Village is opened daily. Now, Jingjai is designed as a space for inspiration and creativity, surrounded by lush green plants that exude a relaxing vibe. There are many shops in this area too, such as cafes, restaurants offering homemade dishes made with local ingredients and seasonal organic produce. The market also serves as a venue for exchanging knowledge about crafts and hobbies for those who are into handmade products. Here you can find handmade and heart-made products or local products by local designers and artists. It is a community for craft lovers. Additionally, it's also home to Jingjai Weekend Market, Jingjai Farmers Market Jing in Chiang Mai, and Rustic Market, which are famous community markets of Chiang Mai, opened every Saturday and Sunday morning. There are also shops that open daily, such as Tops Green, the first green store in Thailand for modern consumers under the concept of the Green Concept Store for people of Chiang Mai and the world. And Good Goods, a shop of central groups selling contemporary products by Thai brands. There are also more than 30 other units open daily. Jingjai Gallery um, is designed as an art space where various types of art can be showcased, which is also located in Jingjai Market with a variety of rotating exhibitions. The gallery serves as a venue that promotes Thai artists on an international scale and it will become an art centre where people can come and experience various fields of art such as fine arts, music and cinematic arts and this gallery, um, gallery is open daily. I'll put links to this place in the description below but yes it's a very unique place with lots of fine arts and crafts, various handmade clothes, lots of restaurants, cafes as well as coffee shops. I think you get a little bit spoilt for choice for cafes and restaurants in this place so we decided to give this place a go within the markets itself and um but they didn't have coffee so i had to walk yeah, around okay. the corner and buy coffee but yeah the menu was quite extensive at this place so we decided to stop and give it a try so as i try to always do when i come into these restaurant restaurants is show you guys a bit of the menu just so you get a feel for the prices of these places so if you're a tourist traveling in thailand um sometimes you just want to know what your average restaurant prices are and um, as you can see there's always a seven percent tax in some of these official restaurants. This menu itself had some, um, yeah, some good food on the menu actually. It looked good anyway. And um, so we had a bit to choose from in regards to what we're gonna eat. This place also started to get filled up pretty quick as we're sitting there, um, well, after we ordered our meal and also whilst we're waiting for it. And by the time we left, there was a line outside to actually come in and eat at this place. So it must be pretty po popular for the locals overall when it comes to um, food here. Well, people seem to like it. Um, that's all I can say. Oh, you wouldn't have such a lineup of people coming in and out of this place. But yeah, I, I really did like the menu options. Though, um, even but, uh, as I was <laughs> going through the bloody menu, um, Anne had already picked everything out and ordered. Then I looked up, she goes, oh, it's okay, I've ordered. I went, okay then. And um, I just was like, well, it's a surprise now. I don't know what, what I'm gonna get until it turns up on the table. But, um, yeah, def uh, this place is okay. It's not bad for giving it a go, I must say. But I do have um, a further opinion on the place after we finished eating here. <laughs>
as there wasn't any coffee there, I just took a bit of a walk around the corner because the lady said, oh, there's lots of coffee places around the corner. This little street vendor was pretty good. Their quality of coffee was quite high, actually. I did pay 70 um, baht for an ice latte, but it was pretty delicious here. I did enjoy my coffee at this little vendor. So this was the duck curry that we actually ordered. And um, also we ordered some just crispy chicken strips on the side. And Fern, uh, my niece, she got herself some fried rice. I think for the quality of the food we got in that restaurant, 824 baht was a bit steep. <laughs> but um, Anne was going, oh, that's so, so, I can cook better. And she can actually. She cooks a really great green curry. And um, yeah, she cooks, her Thai cooking is really good. I can't complain there. I love her cooking. But um, yeah, so a bit pricey in that place. But there was a nice burger joint just behind us there too. Burger and pizza review after that. But let's check out the markets. So this place is all about its arts and crafts. Like you get all sorts of um, homemade stuff, um, local Chiang Mai artists, all that sort of stuff. Sort of like what you get at the Saturday and Sunday markets in some regards. So if you're, if you're after touristy things or different sorts of unique clothing, then this could be a place for you as well. And there's a lot of little restaurants and cafes through here as well. And it's just a nice walk. And yes, they do have toilets in this place. Not sure of the quality, but they do have them. But even Anne looked at one of the sort of more handmade things, locally made clothes. And quite expensive. I think she was looking at some sort of set that she liked at one of these markets and it was like 3,000 baht and I thought hmm charging 3,000 baht for a set of clothes at a market it's a bit steep I thought it's kind of like you go into one of the big um clothing stores and you can pay that much you get something quite decent so you do have a bit of an arts display in there so I notice when it comes to filming and taking photos of artwork here, they get quite sensitive to it because they think you're going to copy their artwork or something. But I just like filming it because I think some art's beautiful. And I like to show people the beautiful art. But So they're not very good at marketing in that regard. Remember when I was in Bangkok and... Um, yeah, they didn't exactly like you taking any sort of photos or filming inside the... Um, art galleries there. Yeah, this is the food court we were in earlier. We're just going back to the car now. Gets very busy here too. Anyway, let's head off. Look at these, these look quite unique in the way they're actually cooked. Look really nice. I'm losing Anne. <laughs> What's Anne lining up for? Huh? Uh, Anne's going to me. Can you film these sort of things? Because <laughs> they are nicely displayed. you got to admit, just the way they're being decorated. Just the food. It looks like a piece of artwork in some regards in the way it's put together. Or maybe it's just the way they've mixed all the different colours together. these little treats here all the way down there just surprised how busy this place gets on a Saturday there's a lot of Chinese tourists here as well I guess we were gonna leave when I said oh now we're heading off but Anne found a line and I was teasing her because I said is it because Thai and Chinese people or Asian people in general just see a line so they have to line up for it even if they don't know what's at the other end <laughs> she's just laughing at me she's going yes that's why but no she's lining up for um, some sort of fruit drinks like lychee or something people really do seem to love this though I think it's the uniqueness of it they get a plate and they start filling up with various snacks they might want to try but these little sort of leaf made plates I 
love this truck. Initially, I thought it was an ice cream truck. Oh, it is. Some sort of ice cream truck. What sort of ice cream they serving? Let's have a look. Ooh, that looks very tasty. Honeycomb soft serve. Oh, I think I have to get one. And another coffee place. Yeah, why not? Let's line up and get some soft serve. Just come out to this place where um, stepson's been staying for the weekend. Something to do with all the school leaders come out here. And um, yeah, it's a really nice place. Looks like it's got a resort here as well as the scout camps come here. And a private restaurant apparently where you've got to book. But let's take a little walk around this place. It's just interesting the sort of places that you can find. Um, yeah, it's quite beautiful actually. Yeah, we parked way up there and I'll do some filming on the way back. But, um, yeah, this is where the scout camps come. Was it? I was just trying to think whether that was a climbing thing. No, it's just a bridge. I don't know what's supposed to be there. Maybe there are activities or something and that looks like some sort of meeting hall in there. So you got, you got something called Chef House. And, um, yeah. Okay. So this is the name of the place just here. So it's a scout camp here in Chiang Mai. But nicely set out. like lots of areas here for them to relax beautiful setup oh yeah they can run and climb over the top of the um little creek there Very peaceful area it's like a bunch of tables over there maybe when they have huge scout camps it's they're looking after a lot of people here <laughs> looks like some sort of activities Looks like army training. <laughs> Just there. Looks like they've tried to make some sort of cubby house up in the tree there. I remember when I was um, a kid making cubby houses in the trees. You should have driven all the way in here. This is a big walk. There's even parking down here. Some sort of accommodation there. Maybe it's groundskeeper. Who knows? I think there'd be a lot of mosquitoes here at night. Okay, so you got parking. Ah, staff only, so it looks like some sort of private restaurant estate. Maybe it's some sort of function center. Yeah. Ah, okay. My kitchen, my rule, chef house, staff only. Huh. Ah, nice. Yeah, maybe with the um, restaurant here. You ring up, you make a custom booking. I'm going to have to look up what Chef's House is later. That's why I just took a photo of the um, name of it. So I can look up what that's about on this scout camp. 
Maybe what you do, you book. You have something on the menu and they go out and buy things. Who knows? Maybe it's for group functions. Must be a very relaxing place, though. Looks like a fun place for the kids to come. I remember these sorts of scout camps, though, when I was growing up in Australia. That, um... Yeah, we used to come out to open places like this. We'd all set up our tents and... Um, there'd be a bunch of activities that we'd do as kids. So a bunch of fruit trees over there. These little huts are cool. Like, look at them. I guess this is where they have the scout camps and these little huts. They have tables down below where they can meet as a group. Looks like shower and toilets down the bottom. They got these little beautiful walkways. <laughs> this is a great scout camp overall, but it does look like they have other facilities here too in this place. So, little decorations for the young kids. Getting them busy. Don't know what that number's about. So you got more huts there in the trees as well. This is the swimming pool that they've got there. It's that pretty big swimming pool. Looks like a little bit of a exercise area. Oh, they've got some weights in there. But yeah, so beautifully set out, this place. A sort of playground over here to the right for younger kids. So here they've got a whole playground area with swings and little activities in here. Just basic playground equipment. Looks like they've got a few things. They've got young kids here. There's a lot of cabins here on this block of land. A lot of sort of meeting halls as well. Little whiteboards in there. Information center, just there. There's lots of seating area around here. If you're waiting for people. Biggest sort of hall on the left. Yeah. Yeah, apparently. All the schools have their leaders and they come together and have meetings. The meeting in this big hall here where Nice is meeting up. So he's in there, we're just waiting for him. So, Nisa Garden, coffee and pastry. Last stop was just to get some food at one of our little favourite restaurants where we get some local Thai food. Um, opposite May here, Fresh Food Markets, this place is. Been here many times and the food's okay. Though I just can't get this omelette that nice seems to like. But overall, I don't mind the food here and we usually um, enjoy what we eat at this place. And it does have lots of catfish in there and to the distance in front of us there, just a bit to the right, is where May here, Fresh Food Markets are. But if you like these sort of videos, hit like and please subscribe as I continue to show my life in Thailand. Thank you.